This is my most recent spoken word. It's titled Empty Spaces. If you stay tuned to the end, I have a little story for you. So, Empty Spaces. We fill each day with either work or play, and when we have free space, we quickly fill it. With TV, sports, friends, coffee, breakfast, lunch, or dinner dates because we don't like empty space. That space between to-do lists and prior engagements, that unmarked time between work days that still needs to be filled. We dislike the desolate darkness of empty space. We despise silence. This is why we're obsessed with our smartphones. Facebook, FaceTime, Instagram, hashtags, and Snapchat. My typical time-wasting vice is words with friends. And when I tire of that and stop scrolling the Facebook feed, I sift through the favorites on my phone to find a friend who wants to chat because I don't like empty space. But I started to wonder why. Why are we so afraid of silence? Is it awkward? To be both in public or private without our phones, music, or headsets? The answer is yes. When I was a waitress, I noticed those dining alone rarely did so without a book or Bluetooth device to keep them occupied. And now, as a flight attendant, it's even worse. When I come down the aisle with the cart to ask what passengers want to drink, some won't even look at me, their eyes glued to their machines. And I have to wonder, did they not see me coming? Down this very narrow aisle with a very heavy cart. And after asking loudly three times over whatever's playing in their headphones what they'd like to drink, without a response, I move on. But it's not just them. As startling as this is to admit, I even find it awkward to sit in my own house in silence without the music or television to distract. But I discovered empty space is powerful. I was sitting in silence, not only because I blew a fuse while cooking in my little jerry-rigged studio, and I found the silence wasn't so bad. In fact, it was inspiring. So I began to write. And I started realizing that filling my days, even hours and minutes, only distracted me from what my heart really wanted, to spend quality time with my creator, my lover, friend, and constant companion. Even when my brain is busy contemplating my to-do list of cleaning, laundry, packing, shopping, can't forget to take the cat to the bed, or change the sheets before going to the laundromat. Where was I? And once I stop the chaotic mayhem of doing things, my brain decides to remind me of all the other things that need doing. And it's not until I pause to reflect on the only one who can help me relax and keep from taxing my brain and body from the constant need to be doing something. But I found it's not that I have to do anything. I simply have to be with him because I don't have to prove anything to him because he accepts me without prerequisites. His only requirement is that I rest in him and he abides in me. His presence that he gives without partiality, I accept without striving. Whether I'm acting out in weakness or in strength, he remains the same. He won't remove his presence simply because we're being immature or imperfect. He knew our flaws when he accepted us. And he freed us from our imperfections the moment that he saved us. And now all he sees in me is the perfection of Christ. And I know I'm a work in progress, but knowing that he sees me blameless gives me the boldness to live with the single-mindedness of pursuing him and his righteousness. And in consequence, I pray to gain the confidence to not fear the silence, but instead to create empty space, to dedicate to pursuing his presence, and to simply sit in silent awe of him. Now here's the story. As you know, this came about through blowing fuse, which sometimes you just have to blow a fuse to see things clearly. Now today, earlier today, I was on a deadhead, which simply means they were positioning me to work the flight. So I was just sitting in my uniform, um, but being able to enjoy the flight from, not that I don't when I work, I always enjoy my flights, don't get me wrong, I do. But it was, it was nice to have two plus hours from Seattle to LA, where I was just sitting and trying to memorize this poem which I've been doing for the last few days, and uh, I had a great stretch of time, and I just started reciting it to memorize it just under my breath. Um, thankfully, there wasn't anyone sitting next to me. There was an older gentleman in the aisle seat right after that, so I positioned myself towards the window, so I was really mouthing to the window so that he didn't think I was crazy. Anyway, so I was looking out the window, reciting after reciting after reciting, and pretty soon, I just had to stop and go, wow, 
is so beautiful outside. God, your creation is gorgeous. And I just stopped reciting and just started thanking God and praising Him. And it's like a domino effect. It just keeps going. And I was just sitting in silent awe of Him. And the significance of that was not lost on me as I realized what I was just reciting. Anyway, I made a point to not pick up that phone or laptop, which would have been really easy to do because I like to write on those, those deadheads when I get them, but I didn't. I left them down. The only thing I picked up was a book, and it's the Psalms, Poetry on Fire, it's the Passion Translation of the Book of Psalms, and crazy, the second one I read really struck me. Psalm 62. So I'm going to read a little part of that. It's Psalm 62, 5 through 8. I am standing in absolute stillness, silent before the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for him to rescue me. Only God my Savior, and he will not fail me. For he alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence protects me. As my bodyguard and my champion defender, there is no risk of failure with him. So why would I let worry paralyze me when troubles multiply around me? The glory all around me is God's. His wraparound presence is all I need. For the Lord is my savior and my spring of life-giving strength. Join me, everyone. Trust only in God every moment. Tell him all your troubles. Pour out your heart longings to him. Believe me when I tell you, he will help you. So I'll just leave you with that. If we can just sometimes stop that busyness and just sit in silence and just reflect on God. Pour out our hearts to him because he will answer us and he will help us.